Hello everyone, it's Al Nigren. I'm back here with another filmmaker interview for you. And I'll introduce our special guest to you in a second. Just in case you don't know who we are, the New Jersey Film Festival is at Rutgers University. We've been programming independent films, art house films, documentaries, experimental work since 1982. And we'll be back again in the spring of 2015, which actually is a misnomer. We'll be screening films starting January 31st in the dead of winter. But we're aligned with the university calendar, so hence the spring part and uh, wishful thinking, I guess. But at the same time, if you'd like to check out our wonderful lineup, we'll be showing over 50 films between January 31st and March 1st, uh, 2015. You can go to our website, which is www.njfilmfest.com, and check out all the wonderful films we'll, we'll be screening. Today, I have the producer of a, an amazing documentary, music documentary, which has an amazing Jersey flavor. It's called Ride on the Dance Floor, the story of Randy Now and City Gardens. And I have with me here today the producer of the film, Peter Tabbitt. Thanks. Welcome, Peter. Thank you so much for having me, Al. Oh, it's a pleasure meeting you and having you on. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this project, Peter. Well, in the mid-'80s, I attended the club and went there probably through the early 90s. Um, and my band played there probably a dozen times or more. And we, we had a, a great opportunity to open for some national acts there and some other local bands. And I uh, got to know the promoter very well. And uh, about four years ago, the director, Steve Tazi, started assembling the movie with the two other producers, Amy Wolfing and Steve DiLodovico, who actually wrote a, a pretty fantastic book based on the film. And a lot of the interviews come from some of those contacts. Mm. And uh, I was called by Steve to, at first to interview. And then uh, we found out we had quite a bit in common. And mm. next thing I knew, I was setting up some some shots for uh, and, and uh, calling interviewees, and, and got pretty heavily involved. Even some writing. And um, Steve just told me one day, he says, "You're pretty much co-producing." So, <laughs> and it just took off from there. So I've been very pleased to be involved for several years now. Yeah. So the project is four years in the making. About four years. Yes. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, and how did Steve get involved? I mean, uh, Steve grew up in Sayreville. He's a local New Jersey guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, myself a Jersey guy always. Uh, the subject of the film and the club, all New Jersey based. Um, and Steve uh, went to the club himself uh, back around the same time I did. So uh, he saw a lot of great music there, and uh, even some of the legendary shows and some of the controversy that evolved there. So yeah. uh, it was close to his heart. And anybody who spent a lot of time there just was pretty attached to it. So he, he really, he's worked on films before, and uh, he, you know, he's, he's quite talented, I think. So he- uh, I think so too. I mean, the film moves in an interesting way. It starts off as a portrait of Randy Ellis, who's now known as Randy Now, as he was a DJ and then subsequently the promoter at City Gardens, and he's the founder, I guess, of the programming aspect of this club, correct? Yeah, and it was really a mom and pop kind of operation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was Randy who was promoting. There was Frank Nalbone, who was the owner of the club. Mm -hmm. And the two of them had a great partnership from about 1980 through the early 1990s. Uh, but it was really just Randy. Uh, he was booking bands. And we're talking about Nirvana and Soundgarden and Faith No More, the Beastie Boys, in, in having a hand to a degree in, in the rise of some of these bands. And it was such an unlikely place in the middle of Philadelphia, New York, in the bowels of Trenton, not a particularly <laughs> nice neighbor. I mean, my car was stolen from the parking lot oh there gosh. in 1988, and uh, it, that's apparently not an unusual, or wasn't right. unusual to happen. Right. So, um, you know, Randy was a one-man show, and, and he was a, a genuine promoter. You didn't have corporate sponsorship back then. You didn't uh, have Live Nation and some of these large collectives. Um, he, he was it. You know, in many ways, as I, I think I mentioned to you before we did the, we're doing this interview, that Randy reminds me a lot of, not myself, but our programming as well, because we've been in the trenches doing the same kind of thing in a cinematic way. And I think there was a lot of kinship between these two entities that were destined for each other, which is really quite wonderful. Yeah, and he's a, and we're just so pleased to be a part of New Jersey Film Festival. Very, very pleased to be there on January 31st. And, and Randy, uh, I mean, everything from the flyers to having bands sleep over at his house, you know, and rather large touring bands, too. Um, it was just all Randy. So this, the movie yeah. kind of has a parallel story arc. There's the rise and the decline of the club, right. and of Trenton, for that matter, yeah. historically. And yeah. uh, there's Randy's you know, career as a promoter. I mean, he was a, a mailman with a pension who left everything to try and make it happen. And you know, he put 1,200 people in a place every weekend for some pretty phenomenal uh, shows at an unusual, unlikely venue. Yeah. Um, uh, and then there was a decline of that eventually, too. Right. And I think 
Uh, I remember one part in the movie where he just decided after a snowy day to quit his mailman job, and then the subsequent show where he had booked Motorhead and had, you know, literally a thousand plus people waiting to get in, and they decided they weren't going to play. Yeah, and that was in 1986, and uh, we actually were lucky to have some interesting audio uh, from the parking lot yeah, when yeah, Randy yeah. stepped outside to make that announcement in the, years in the film. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a, a, a pretty traumatic thing for him, having just left everything to, to make this happen. But he, he dies for the music. I mean, it's obviously a labor of love. It's not done with money involved, although I think it would be nice, but it's not the first thing that yeah, he I, thinks about. I completely, guess, so. and I think that kind of, that, that's a metaphor for, for the film and for City Gardens, yeah. the independent spirit. Randy was all about that independent spirit, and he still does shows. He does shows in small venues, whether it's mm -hmm. a theater in Bordentown uh, or at his little shop, uh, which is in Bordentown. Yeah. Um, he, he still does it, and he does it purely for the love of it, and there's right. nothing to make in it, but he has all those great contacts still. I mean, a member of the Monkees, he still gets these folks to come <laughs> because he's got these, you know, 30-year enduring relationships. Yeah. Well, folks, it, you absolutely have to see this film. It's our opener. Uh, there is a short documentary that also has a musical theme that will technically open the festival. It's called Fur Peace Ranch. It doesn't get any better than this. And it's by Andy Walla from Athens, Ohio. And it focuses on Yorma Kalkinen, the amazing Jefferson Airplane and Hatuna guitarist. He has a camp, a guitar camp, set in the rural area in Ohio. That's also, they also go on biking trips on motorcycles. I, I can't wait to see that. It's a really amazing It, it reminds film. me of Robert Fripp's uh, guitar craft, and I'm, <laughs> I'm a huge Robert Fripp fan, so yeah, we're looking, we're too. so proud, thrilled to be a part of opening night with that particular short. Yeah, so that's going to be premiering, and then right on the dance floor will follow, and we also will have Steve there as well as Peter and Randy. And Randy, correct. And so, folks, you come to the screening, there'll be free food, two amazing uh, music documentaries, plus you get to meet the director, the producer, and the main subject of the feature. So come and check it out. It's on Saturday, January 31st in Voorhees 105. High definition projection, great sound system. Uh, starts at 7 p.m. and $10 is general admission. Hope you'll join us there. And thank you so much for coming, yeah. Peter. Al, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be pleasure here to be and here. to meet you. To meet you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.